So do you guys remember when Adam, the invertebrarian, passed me a load of sun beetles as well as larvae? Well, my good friend from that pet page also provided me a shed ton of these beetles. Now they're temporarily living in here. And there are, woof, there are loads. Sorry, I had some fruit flies jump out then. He provided me 30 beetles here, and Adam provided me also a large amount of beetles and larvae. So massive, massive thanks to these guys. And I think it's about time we set up Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 for its new inhabitants. And welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So yes, as I said in that drawn out intro, I have to give a shout out to the Invertebrarian and that pet page for their kind donations of the sun beetles. With their specific species name being popped just up here for you to research yourself. So we should, in theory, if we get them to thrive, be able to constantly reproduce grubs for our feeding once the colony is large enough. And I may even inhabit some other beetles into the same enclosure. All types of flower beetle, of course. We don't want any cannibalism happening here. So if you remember a while ago, coffee table enclosure 2.0, I say a while ago, well, as you've always known, when Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 was created, it housed our Egyptian predatory beetles and also our singular final blue vein death beetle. So these guys are now living quite happily in this enclosure here, but that's not what today's video is about. If you would like to see these guys featured again, please give me a comment below so I know to show you guys perhaps a feeding video of these beauties. So let's start off and have a look at what I've started with for Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 and you can watch it build up today. So here, my little bug loving friends, is Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 as it stands. So right now, I've taken out all of the sand that was in here before. I've just put a very thin layer of cocoa fibre and topsoil at the bottom. That's just to cover the metal sheen along the bottom. What we're actually going to be doing right now is building this enclosure up. So we're going to be using rotting oak leaves. We're going to be using rotting white wood. Two essentials when dealing with beetle larvae. Now I want to keep the front section here very, very shallow. And that's because this, sorry about the scraping noise, is the doorway that I'll be using because I will have to place one of my sick insect enclosures on the top of this, making the top part a little bit more difficult to open. So we're gonna have a shallow end this end and then we're gonna build it up around the middle and the back. So first things first, where did I put my big old bag of white wood? Right under the camera. <clears throat> so in here, loads of leaves, absolute mountains of rotting white wood. Let's get it in there, shall we? So you might be thinking, Sam, it's just a load of soil, white wood, leaves. Hardly attractive, is it? just very plain and bland. Well, no masterpiece is complete without a centerpiece and the surrounding areas, right? So I found some cool bits of wood to add to this enclosure for added effect. So in this bag, ladies and gentlemen, is some old dugout roots that I did myself. Got a few plain pieces, like so, but the masterpiece is this bit here. Now you'll have a closer look once I set this up how I want it. So here we have it. It's not picturing as nicely as I can see it with my eyes as it is on the camera. We've got an area which I'll call lichen corner. A lot of lichen moss growing out there. We've got a big rooted centerpiece that is surrounded 
by natural mosses. We've got caves under pieces of bark. We've got other parts of root and we have some nice fresh greener moss parts to this enclosure. Let me try and see if I can get you a side angle view. So here's what it will look like coming from one of the corners with the door open and as I move along here is the view from the other corner. Pretty sweet right? And here is that centerpiece. All entangled parts of root. Now whether you think that looks cool or not, I reckon with some colour in here when we're feeding these fruit beetles or with them themselves scurrying around, it will truly be beautiful. So I've popped in just a few of the beetles that Adam provided me. You see what I mean? That pop of colour in this environment. It's truly outstanding. So the next step is to get all the rest of the beetles and larvae into this enclosure and then we'll have a better overall look. Look at the size of the larvae squirming around. There's more just under here. Oh, too quick for me. Look at that. Disappeared before I could even grab it. But it's weird how big the larvae is and compared to the actual beetle. And there might be some more in here. There. There we have it. The grubs. Do have a bit of a nasty nip these guys, so be careful. There you can see. Look at the size of that grub compared to the beetles. To put him back where he can dig. Cool, right? Now that Adam's beetles are in, let's put in our additional 30 beetles given to us from that pet page. So where I tipped all that sludgy horribleness into the back, that was actually containing a lot of my larvae that I bought, so I had a fair few larvae in there. Now unfortunately I didn't notice this, which is a cocoon. So they go into these balls before they turn into beetles, it's like their pupation stage. And I'm not sure if I've caused damage to this one now because it seems that it's partially open there. So I'm just going to let that one rest, cover it up slightly. But here we have it guys, there are a fair few be beetles still kind of buried under that, they'll work their way back up. But here we are, on the main centerpiece, we have loads. Over here, scrolling down, along here, look at that. Amazing, right? Here's just a better view of one specific beetle, so you can appreciate their appearance. I think this enclosure is going to be epic. The overall look isn't kind of as good as I was hoping. I think I might have to go and collect some more moss to give it that added effect. But they have mountains of rotten white wood and leaves within this enclosure. Plenty for the larvae to thrive. Now I'm going to let these guys settle in before I get them some fruit and veg to dine on, being fruit beetles, they will enjoy the odd bit of uh, fruit or veg, obviously. Look at the colour on that one. That one might have been freshly emerged. Look how much more vibrant the yellow is in comparison to the others there. Beautiful. So if we could get a mix of colour in here guys and get some other types of fruit beetle to live in Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0, I think that would be pretty damn cool. So guys, as we discussed in a previous video where I mentioned I was going to do this build, we talked about naming it here and I asked you guys for suggestions. Now, 
I'm not actually going to choose any of the suggestions you guys gave to name this colony of beetles. I have actually chosen my own. But don't worry, there is something in the works that will be coming up fairly shortly where I did choose one of those name suggestions, but to name something else. Something perhaps even cooler than our fruit beetle setup. So the coffee table itself will remain to be called Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 just because that's what I'm used to. But the beetles, I have chosen to name them the Solar Swarm. What do you guys think about that? Imagine this covered in them, hundreds more, bringing that coloration out. Solar relating to the sun, swarm relating to how many we have here. So yeah. That's it guys, here we have the Solar Swarm. Let me know in the comments below if you liked the name chosen and stay tuned to the channel to see whose name got given to something probably even more important than this. Ah, I'm well chuffed with this. Bop, 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 bop. No one wants to see your Christmas socks at this time of the year. Oh, feet, I hate feet. What am I doing? Dirty lid as well. Just put the lid on, thought, oh, I'll show them what it's like with the lid on there. And you know what? I'm going to go clean this later because I am lazy and I can't be bothered to do it just for one final shot. But I will show you guys later on. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. I'm going to go and drink that brew right there. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay tuned. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.